morning, Lord, I thank you. For the Lord has been good to me. And I can't bless him enough for how he has walked me. Bless his holy name. Amen. At this time, may you see it. We're so glad to be back into the house of the Lord this afternoon. Amen. For we didn't have to be here, but the Lord is good. Amen. And he allowed us to come before him and you one more time. And this afternoon, we're just going to turn in our Bibles to Acts, the third chapter. Acts, the third chapter, the second through the seventh verse. We are so glad to have everyone with us this afternoon by whichever means that you are with us. We are grateful. Amen. And I think as ever before, we are so grateful for technology. Amen. 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 Acts 3, 2 through 7 says, Now a man was lame from birth, was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he the lame man was put every day to beg from those that were going into the temple. When he, the lame man, saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked them for some money. Peter looked straight at him, the lame man, and I just add those words when he says him, the lame man. Peter looked at him, and John did also. Then Peter said, look at us. Look at us. So the lame man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And may I insert right here that the Bible says here that the lame man looked at Peter and John expecting to get something from them. Sometimes we ask God for something, but we don't expect to get it. The point I'm bringing out right there is Peter said, look at me. And the man looked in expectation. The Bible tells us that Peter and John got the man's attention and he looked at him. And it was if Peter was saying, look at me, I want you to hear what I'm saying. I don't want you to miss this. You know, sometimes we hear different preachers say, don't miss this. Amen? Amen. So Peter said, look at me, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Then Peter said, to the beggar, silver or gold, I do not have. Have I not? All right. But what I do have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Hallelujah. The lame man at that point, Peter, I won't say he didn't do it to some of us, but this, I'm just talking about Peter and John right here. After Peter said, in the name of Jesus, walk, he wasn't standing there in doubt. He wasn't standing there like maybe the man won't get up, but Peter took the lame man by the right hand. And the Bible says, Peter helped him up. Like Peter knew that what I got and I'm giving to you, it's real. So Peter helped the lame man up. And the Bible says instantly, the lame man's feet and ankles became strong. Amen. Such as I have, give 
Levi to you. And I'm just going to use a topic today, such as I have. A lot of people today, well, okay, I don't want to get off. Amen. But that just made me think a lot of people today, with all that's going on in the world, people coming to us for all kind of wanting to know what's going on, people trying to figure out things and a lot of times we try to give people what we don't have. We try to act as if we are something that we are not. A lot of times we just be better saying, I don't know the answer to that, but what I do know is, I know a man. I have a savior. And I can introduce you to him. This particular scripture reminds me that not only should the person looking for help have expectations, but the person giving the help must also have the expectation that what they are given indeed will be helpful. You don't want to give somebody something that they can't use. Amen? You don't want to give them your regifted present from last year that you didn't want. But you want to give them something expecting that what I'm going to give them, they will be able to use and it will help them. In this third chapter of Acts, we have a couple of things. We have a miracle and we have a sermon. The miracle was wrought. The miracle came about to make way for the sermon. Because back in those days in the book of Acts, there was a lot of miracles and things that took place so that people would believe. So the miracle was what to make way for the sermon. And the sermon was going to confirm that the doctrine that was about to be preached, and it would make way for this doctrine. And it would, it would let the people in their minds, after they heard the sermon that was to be preached, the miracle that happened would be explained in that sermon. So the miracle did what we call today help to break up the fallow ground. A lot of people won't believe unless they see the people's heart. The miracle was brought and brought to break up that fallow ground so that they would hear the message and the message was you can't walk your lane but Jesus saves. Amen. Mm -hmm. The miracle of course was the healing of the man and this is also key. He was lame from his birth. He was healed with one with a word from Jesus, but he was lame from his birth. The sermon which was preached after this man was healed, in order to bring people to Christ that they would repent of their sins, the sermon preached said to believe in God now, and that he was to be glorified for what he did. You pray for him, God healed him, and God gets the glory. Let me say also, the man was lame from birth. Think about it. We often look at people and see things and see things that happen to them and wonder what they have done. Not always have you done anything. Some things happen a lot of times so that God can get the glory. This particular miracle came, just happened to come by through the ministries of John and Peter, two of the apostles during Christ's times. But we today must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, pray for the sick, and believe that God is yet a miracle worker. Amen. By the way, just for uh, our educational purpose, the author of Acts was Luke. Luke was the one that was doing the writing at this time. This was during Christ's time when the church was divided into several, some say societies, we'll just say several groups, I don't know, several <laughs> different churches. And at this time they were sent out two by two. And maybe Luke was just assigned to one of the groups and so that's why he was there doing the writing. I'm not sure why. Peter and John, we do know this, had a very close relationship, intimate 
intimacy after Christ's resurrection. Not like two men, friendship, intimacy. You hate to use that word sometimes, but they had a very close relationship, more than they had had before. You might have heard it said, there are, is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Yeah. Well, those words seem to relate to Peter and John's relationship. Let me say this this afternoon. John was the disciple, I say, of love. John was made up of love. He, John, was more compassionate to Peter. This could be why he and Peter had such a relationship. John was more compassionate to Peter upon Peter's fall and repentance. John was more tender with Peter. John was more willing to listen to Peter's bitter weeping for the sins he had committed, more than any of the other apostles at that time. John was more understanding of how to restore Peter in the spirit of meekness which made him very dear to John. We're supposed to restore one another with love. When one falls out, falls away, we're not supposed to say, look at what she did, look at what he did last night, but we are to restore one another with love and in meekness. So in other words, I'm not so sure if John understood Peter better than everyone else, I'm not sure if John was more familiar with the failures of one's life or if he just had that kind of love as Jesus had for mankind. But Jesus loved us when we didn't love ourselves. That's right. Jesus died for us so that we might live. And that was the kind of love he had for mankind. Let's look at the time and place of this miracle, which is kind of interesting today. Remember the topic? Such as I have. The place of this miracle took place at the temple gate called Beautiful. Beautiful was a place, it was a place of coming together. It was a place of where they met. Uh, may I say and add right here that it is good for like minds to come together. It's always good for people that believe alike to come together. Go into the temple the house of the Lord, even if you're doing no more than meeting in the church parking lot for a hot dog of a hamburger, it is good for people of God to come together. Amen. Why? David said in the Psalms 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's because you're going through things all week. You're going through things all day. You're going through things on your job. So there ought to be somewhere that you can meet and go and be glad to be able to be in the presence of the Lord. We know the Lord is with you always. Amen? But it would seem that to me, maybe I'm wrong, when there's a great need in our lives, a need that is greater than our abilities, when even there's a miracle needed in our lives, something that we can't do for ourselves and it, it amazes me and I just think sometimes it is good to go where the miracle is more likely to take place. Now I know God can heal you anywhere. I know God can save you anywhere. I know that God is able to do anything anywhere. But the Bible still says that if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. There's something good about going to the place where Jesus is. And then if I'm looking for a miracle, from God, I'm not going to go to the club. Amen. So when you have a need and you want God to do something for you, come on into the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. This chapter reminds me of how good it is to have even hours of prayer. Because during this time, the Jewish people prayed. Well, they prayed the night, 9 a.m., they prayed 12, they prayed 3. They just prayed. So this particular miracle took place at the ninth hour, which was 3 p.m. And it took place at a, where they were, it was customary, where people were going in and out of the temple. So this particular man who received this miracle was described as a poor, lame beggar sitting at the temple gate. How many of us will pass right by somebody sitting outside the church door and walk right on by? Jesus. 
I remember back in the day in Greenberg where I grew up, there was a building that was on fire one Sunday morning. It was a Sunday morning about 11 o'clock. And the story was told how the people that were going to the church, which was about a block and a half away, rode right on by the fire, rode right on by the disaster and said, I can't be late for church. But sometimes we got to stop even at the temple gate, even at the doorway of the church, and look down and see that somebody's crippled, somebody's lame, right. and somebody needs a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes today when we see similar cases, we ought to be affected. We ought to not be able to say, I don't care, but we ought to be affected so that we will take the time to stop and look at people with compassion. That's right. Because sometimes things are designed. Sometimes things are put in front of our face. But maybe sometimes it's the Lord's will that we should look and understand people's plight. Amen. After all, all of us by nature are spiritually weak. After all, all of us by nature are without strength. All of us by nature were laid from birth. We were unable to work or walk or do God's service until we got a touch from the master. Amen. Yes, this lame man was a beggar, couldn't walk, couldn't work. All he had to live by day by day was somebody that was going to be willing to give him whatever they wanted to give him, whatever they wanted to throw to him. He was part of God's poor. You must understand that some of the poor out there today are God's poor, God's people. I know a lot of times we are critical of one another and sometimes we think that he and she is not seemingly on our level and we think he and she needs to get theirs just like we got ours. But sometimes we've got to look at things from another side of the coin Amen. and understand that they're without, by the grace of God, so go us. That could have been me with no shoes. That's right. That could have been me with nowhere to lay my head. Amen. It could have been me with nobody to hold me up. Amen. So Lord, I thank you because by your grace, by your it grace. is not me. Yes. So we got to also keep in mind the scripture that says in Matthew 26 and 11, the poor will always be with you. They're not going anywhere. Amen. Somebody's going to always be poor. So this man couldn't walk. He couldn't even get to the temple gate unless somebody brought him there. So his friends brought him there every day. And he was probably not the best thing to look at. As I said, he probably wasn't even the best thing to smell. But his friends, or, or some good Samaritans, at least they brought him to the temple gate. And Cornelius in the 10th chapter said, um, in, the, in the first verse says, Cornelius was a devout man. This is another story. And he and his whole house prayed and praised God and gave much alms to the people. Alms is when you give somebody something that's in need. That's what alms is. So Cornelius was a man that did this. So in Acts the 10th chapter, the first verse, God said to Cornelius, your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before me. So in so many words, God was saying, I see what you do. I know what you're doing, and your living is not in vain. Let me say right here that we have got to learn on occasion that we can give somebody a dollar. That's right. Amen. Amen. Objects of charity, alms, same thing, should be in a particular manner with on occasions when we go to the temple, the church, to pray. As I said earlier, it's a pity to be on your way to church or to be going in the church door and see somebody in need and you can't even stop to say Jesus saves. Amen? Amen. The gate of the temple was called beautiful because it was beautiful and spectacular and magnificent. And it makes me think today of how we have so many churches that are beautiful, spectacular, and magnificent. But if a drunk comes in there acting a little strange, the ushers of that same beautiful, magnificent edifice will usher that drunk out. Amen. 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 So let's note here that Peter and John had the, the, developed a reputation of being charitable men. Even though they did not have much to give on this day, they did not turn away. They didn't have much to give on this day, but they did stop and say, such as I have, I've given unto you. The reason why I say they had a reputation of being charitable Christians in that day, because weeks before this, there were lame and blind men that came to Christ at the same temple in 
Jesus has done. So of course the expectation is from you to be something like the button you're wearing on this shirt. Amen? So since people before they had gotten help at this temple gate, it was not strange that this man was brought to this gate by his friends. But this is what happened. There's a well, there's a song in the world. We used to say, I ain't too proud to beg. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we're too proud to beg. Too proud to say we ain't need. Too proud to ask for the help that we need. Yes. But look at what happened here. Because this man wasn't too proud to beg. That's right. And because he was asking for just a little something to make it through the day. Look what happened. He got more than what he asked for. Amen. He got more than what he came for. He got more than what he was expecting because he wasn't too proud to bet. Right. Peter and John were messengers of Christ and they knew and understand the limitations of their own power. A lot of us today, we think we are just like God. Amen. Every time somebody is in critical condition, it may not be your time to go. That's right. Every time somebody's in prison, it may not be your time to go. That's right. They were spirit led. You are not God. Amen? Amen. You are not even Jesus. Amen? Amen. So you have got to understand that sometimes some things are not for you. But the good part about this was John and Peter realized that they did not have it all. They realized, and wouldn't it be so good today if people just realized, I don't have everything that you need but what I have I'm going to give it to you Amen. I don't have all the answers but let me introduce you to Jesus yes. amen the song said give me Jesus yes. amen and you won't have to want for anything else so here we have an example of Christians as a Christian ought to be instead of Peter and John turning away from the beggar instead of them turning up their nose amen they turned toward him and they knew that they had something to offer. A lot of us say we got things to offer, but when it comes down to really, when the when they say when the rubber hits the wheel, we don't have nothing to offer. How many of us forget where we have come from? How many of us forget who we were? How many of us forget when we didn't have nothing to eat? Jesus. Amen. You get a little something, and now you think you're supposed to look down on everybody else. And everybody else's kids. You forgot when your kid wasn't acting right. That's right. You forgot when your husband wasn't acting right. Jesus. You forgot when you didn't know which way to turn. Amen. But somebody looked at you and said, So in God I don't have, but I can offer you Jesus. Yes. Somebody looked at you and said, I can't do this or that, but I can pray for you. The song says, Somebody pray for me. Have me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. So we should be as we get on our feet. I always remember these stories in life. And there was a, a beggar and a, a, a drunkard, had a whore up in Westchester County. And I never forget, he was sleeping in somebody's house paying rent to sleep on the couch. Each one of them was paying to sleep in the chair. And I'll never forget when somebody I know went down and got them off the couch out of the chair, brought them into their house, gave them a room, gave them some food, and then this person got on their feet, got their car, started driving around, and had the nerve to say, I won't ride nobody like that in my car. Jesus. We need to take a look at ourselves today and ask God, are you satisfied with me? We can be so critical. Amen. Amen. Time out for that. You used to smoke weed and get high too. And if you weren't smoking weed, you were smoking something back then. Amen. The one time alcohol, which is still one of the worst, worst drugs out there. Alcohol has done more damage than any other abuse. The drug. Amen. So we as ministers, we as Christians, we as people have to look towards the Lord. And then with, while we're looking toward the Lord with the eye of our mind. We're looking at the person on the ground, but we have to let our mind and our eyes be looking up. And we got to say and take note that this man was a beggar and he didn't have to be told twice.
to look at Peter and John. When they say, look, he looked. So we must come to God with that same hope, depending on his word. When Jesus said, look unto me, and I will give you rest, we got to start doing just that. We must direct our prayers to the master while our eyes look up to the hills from which came our help. And I am sure that some of us today don't have things to give, but what we do have to give, we're not giving. We can give a song in the church and we refuse to sing. We can usher on the door and we refuse to usher. We can pray and lead a prayer and we refuse to pray. We won't play the organ, the drums, or the guitar, or the saxophone unless we're getting some money. Amen. But there are some things you have that you can give. That's right. Free. I'm not saying much to take advantage of that, but I'm trying to make a point. We have to look today and say we don't have the world's total answer, but such as we have, that we give unto you. We're not going to walk away from the world's problem, but that that we have, we're going to give unto you. Amen. And I'm going to say to end this shortly, briefly, cutting this short, we got to learn to be transparent. A lot of us are still trying to be things that we are not. And that's why we can't get out of some of the situations we're in. A lot of us are trying to just look and find something mysterious. When all we got to understand is, all we got to do is take one look. When Peter said, look at me, the man looked at Peter, but after the miracle, he learned to learn to look at Jesus. The old song says, one look, just one look at Jesus will give us, amen, salvation and the victory. Amen. Amen. So if we don't have anything else to give, amen, if we don't have anything else to give, amen, we can at least sometimes sit down and sing a song with somebody, something beautiful, something good. All of my confusion, the Lord understood. I don't have everything to give you, but let me tell you this. All I had when I came to Jesus was brokenness and strife. But God made something beautiful out of my life. So some are going, I don't have, but I can give you Jesus. And Jesus will take your brokenness. And Jesus will turn your life around. And if you hold on to Jesus, he will give you a gift that keeps on giving. Ah! The gift that the Lord will give you will keep on giving. So I don't have silver and gold. I don't have the answer to everything, but I offer Jesus to you today. I'm offering Christ to you today. I'm offering you the best thing that can ever happen to you. If you accept Christ, you will have all that you need. And that's why Romans 10 and 9. And Romans 10 and 9 verse and 10 chapter says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then you can be saved. Yes. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation.